guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, go ahead and hit subscribe before you go any further and realise how fucking garbage this content is. If this is not your first time here, well, you may want to get your head checked and uh, maybe go watch some better content. Today's video, we are going to show you War Rocks. That's right, War Rocks, the TCG World Debutante from Blazing Vortex. The deck has more or less been condemned to the abyss of nothingness in the Yu-Gi-Oh world already, but the deck could be a ton of fun to play with your friends, and it's also very cheap to pick up. On that note, if you are inspired by today's video, you can go ahead and check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There'll be a link in the description for a cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly. And if you head over to the eBay store, that's where you'll get that discount, and not just on Yu-Gi-Oh singles, but they do Pokemon ones as well. But that's enough waffling on from me, let's get stuck in to the video. Warrock is a Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG archetype that had its world premiere in Blazing Vortex in February 2021. The Warrock archetype design revolves around a primitive looking group of warriors who are decorated in ways which gives them a very animalistic vibe. The deck focuses largely around an aggressive playstyle, mostly benefiting from proceeding to the battle phase, not too dissimilar from gladiator beasts, and in doing so tends to flood the field with bodies, which are usually getting beefed up into becoming beat sticks. The deck is relatively new, and so hasn't overly established itself in the game, but largely it's being condemned already to the status of being one of those kind of has-been decks before it's even begun to appear. The deck, however, does have some cool things going for it. It is a warrior type deck, which instantly puts it in a good position. It's also Earth Attribute, which is arguably one of the stronger attribute options. If you are thinking about getting the deck, it's pretty cheap to pick up, so definitely don't be deterred from looking into it. Also, given it's from a new set, you can easily pick up the cards by buying boosters of Blazing Vortex. We are also expecting some more upcoming support in Lightning Overdrive later this year, so we don't yet know how this will affect the deck. For this part of the video, we'll be discussing the existing War Rock cards. Keep in mind at the time of this video, we don't yet know what will be in Lightning Overdrive, so there'll be some additional cards to consider once those drop. I'll be reading the cards in a somewhat shortened manner to save time, but the images will be on screen for your perusal. Although, given that we're all Yu-Gi-Oh players, we both know that you probably won't be reading a fucking thing. So we start off with War Rock Basilios. During a battle phase in which your Earth Warrior battles, quick effect, you can allow this card to attack directly this turn. And also, your War Rocks you currently control gain 200 attack until the end of your opponent's turn. While it's in your hand or graveyard, when your Earth Warrior monster is destroyed by battle, you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Each effect is a hard once per turn. War Rock Skylar. It gains 100 attack for each monster your opponent controls. During a battle phase in which your Earth Warrior monster battles, quick effect you can target a level 5 or lower warrior in your graveyard and special summon it. Also, all War Rocks you control currently gain 200 attack until the end of your opponent's turn, but you can't attack directly with level 5 or lower monsters. This effect is a hard once per turn. War Rock Orpis. If you don't control any monsters, or all monsters you control are warriors, then you can normal summon it without tributing. If your Earth Warrior battles, after damage calculation you can send an Earth Warrior from your deck to the graveyard except for Orpis, then all War Rocks you control gain 200 attack until the end of your opponent's turn. This effect is a hard once per turn. War Rock Fortier. If your Earth Warrior battles, after damage calculation you can add a War Rock card from your deck to your hand except for Fortia. Then all War Rocks you control gain 200 attack until the end of your opponent's turn. If it's sent from your monster zone to the graveyard by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon a level 5 or higher War Rock from your hand or deck. Each effect is a hard once per turn. War Rock Gactos. If an Earth Warrior is normal summoned, you can special summon this card from your hand. If it's sent from your monster zone to the graveyard by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon a level 5 or higher War Rock from your hand or deck. This effect is a hard once per turn. War Rock Mountain. When it's activated, you can add a War Rock monster from your deck to your hand. At the start of the battle phase, if you control no monster at all, or all of them are warriors, you can special summon a War Rock from your hand with a different name than any you control. If your warrior would be destroyed by a battle, you can send this card to the graveyard instead. You can only activate one copy of Mountain per turn. War Rock Ordeal. You can only control one copy of Ordeal at any time, and when it's activated you place three counters on it. When a War Rock monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can remove a counter to draw one card. Once all the counters are removed, you send this card to the graveyard. 
Due to the limited number of direct Warrock cards currently available, most of these are maxed out in most current builds. Okay, so for this part of the video, we're going to be taking a look at a sample deck list. Again, this is not something that's overly tried and tested, but something that you could run with if you wanted something for a bit of a basis to work off. The deck also has some really cool synergy with Goki, with Amazon S, with Onomat, so those are variants that you could definitely consider trying out for yourself. There's also a ton of budget-friendly options that you can choose to use in this deck as well instead of some of the more expensive cards if that's a route you want to go down. But again, the deck list is pretty simple. So we've got my triple copies of Basilios. Uh, this can obviously be special summons. It's a bit less of a brick than potentially some of the other options that are here. We've got two copies of Warrock Skylar. Uh, I think the two is perfectly plenty in this build. You could up it to three, though, if you want to just max out on names. We've got triple copies of Orpis. Again, this is usually going to be normal summoned without needing to tribute, so it's a bit less of a brick than potentially some of the other options. Warrock Gactos is obviously just a really good option, a great extender, uh, and of course it's a perfectly good normal summon in this deck. And then we've got Warrock Fortia. We're playing triple copies of this. This is one of your main cards that you need to see in your deck as quickly as possible. Running two copies of Goblinburg because it gets around that whole restriction. It's an Earth Warrior, which is perfect, and of course makes Rank 4s very, very easy to obtain in the deck. Just two copies, though. We're running things a little bit tight, and I didn't really have the space for the third. I wanted to try and keep this in the 40 card range. Running triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. I think Ash Blossom is just really good in every single format. This is no different than any other. And if you had to pick a hand trap that you really needed to slam into any deck that could be kind of playable, then Ash Blossom is probably the best one. We have triple copies of War Rock or Deal, mostly because drawing cards is pretty nice. The card itself isn't super strong, but it's a perfectly good option to have in here, and again could be omitted when something more powerful comes along. We have triple copies of the field spell, being able to search is obviously just bread and butter stuff in this deck, something that you need to be able to do, you want to see those names as quickly as possible, spam the field and push for major damage, and this card just helps you get there. Now people are going to absolutely hate this, but I don't really care if you want to win some duels, sometimes you're going to upset a few people along the way, and Mystic Mind will certainly do that. If people aren't main deck and removal for this kind of card, then you get yourself a free win, and it really is just a free win. Alternatively, you're just going to sit on this until you see your double or nothing and can push for major damage, or probably game. And we're running Terraforming in here as well, because, you know, searching field spells is good. Triple copies of Pot of Extravagance, I was torn between this and the new pot card, I ended up going with Extravagance instead, being able to draw the extra card is kind of vital in this deck in and of itself and to be honest with you your extra deck isn't really that important there are some other options that you could consider out there of course all of the pot cards are usually good for this kind of deck i just think that this is probably the best of the bunch we're running two copies of double or nothing just in case you do happen to open the singular one it is a bit sad that we're running multiple garnets and usually i'd be super against this but honestly i think that this deck just needs to see it it needs as much help as it can get and this is the kind of card that's going to help you get there a single copy of Road to the deck is just full of warriors, so why the hell wouldn't you run it? Call by the Graves so you don't lose to every single hand trap in the world, which, you know, is a very good possibility with this deck. Uh, but Call by the Grave can be great going offensively or defensively. It's great going first or second. Second is our preference here, but of course, having the option when you go first is perfectly good as well. Arby's Feather Dust for back row removal. We are in a slightly more back row heavy format, and you want to be able to push for major damage. This is just going to help facilitate that. Unfortunately, we're reboot is at one, so we can only play them one copy, but absolutely one copy is what you need to play. To be honest with you, if you don't see your Harpies Feather Duster, but you do see a way into Utopia Double, then probably this will be enough of an insurance policy to go and attack your opponent for game. And triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. Again, we're going to opt to go second as much as possible, but this is a really good option going first as well. The fact that it can also switch off the opponent's back row as well, you know, all the good stuff that Infinite Impermanence does. And then on to the extra deck, so this isn't actually probably how I would line up an extra deck, it's just mostly to give you some ideas. But given we're running Extravagance, of course you'd want to triple out on any cards that you feel are vital, so you do that with Utopia Double, with Utopia itself. You could go into Utopia Lightning as well as a bit of an insurance policy if Utopia the Double doesn't pull off, just another way of getting big damage on board. Speaking of big damage, Barber General does the same sort of thing, and of course being an Earth Warrior has its benefits of its own. And then I've opted here to just include some rank 4s that are really good as toolbox options. Maguska here, in case you're forced to go first, you already know, you just set it up and pass turn. Tornado Dragon, if you've got one particular pesky bit of back row that you need to play through. Abyss Dweller, there's certain decks that are just auto loose to this card. Zeus is in here just because we can, but honestly you can play so many other options it really doesn't matter too much. 
Black Rose Dragon because we have the ability to make Synchro 7s. I wouldn't put too many of them in here, but this is certainly an option you could include to board wipe. Gayo Kings, another good option that you could consider here. It is an Earth Warrior as well, so that is something of a benefit. And lastly, we've got Blackluster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos. For some reason, this is an Earth, which absolutely baffles me, but given it's an Earth Warrior, we're definitely going to take advantage of that. Again, this is certainly not expected to be some super competitive build or anything like that. I mean, the deck in and of itself is particularly uh, non-competitive, we should say, but this is just an idea of how you could try and consider building the deck as a way to get the best out of it. And again, not super tried and tested, this should just give you a basis to work from. And that brings us to a close on today's video. Thank you very much for joining me. I do really appreciate you being here and making it this far into the video, whether it's because you really enjoy the content or whether you couldn't possibly look away from this absolute fucking train wreck. In either case, again, I do really appreciate you being here. Thank you very much for making it this far. It's worth noting that this isn't the only kind of content that we do on the channel. We do deck profiles, locals vlogs when they're back, events vlogs when proper events are back, and my god, we're looking forward to those. Other how-to-play tutorials, combo tutorials, and all of that kind of good nonsense. So if you want to make sure you don't miss out on any of that kind of stuff, make sure you have hit subscribe so you don't miss out in future. And as a final note, I do read all of the comments, all of that good stuff. So if you do want to reach out to me and get in contact, maybe there's something you'd like to see on the channel. Maybe there's something you did like or didn't like about this video and you'd like to drop your opinion down below. Go ahead and do so. I take the time to read as many of them as I possibly can. But again, that's enough from me. Thank you very much for joining me here and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.